Yo, what's up ladies and gentlemen, good to see you again, and we've got a good matchup here against my man Arnell, he's playing Yamato, and this, is, he is the king of rocking some very weird cards in his decks, and I respect it, I like it. He's got uh, a couple of cards you'll see in this match that I was like, what? I was not expecting that. So, some very interesting um, card choices, but also a really good game. And I've been really enjoying Reiju, so I've just been in uploading some of these matches. But guys, I am super excited for Starter Deck 13 to come out. I've been toying with some of the uh, deck builds for not only Black Yellow Luffy, but Red Yellow Sabo. And I've been having an absolute blast. So really excited to see where, you know, some of the deck building goes as it comes out. I do think that they're going to see a lot of, you know, buffs once EBO1 comes out as well as OPO7. But I think for the time being, it's just been really fun to kind of test some of those out. But enjoying Reiju for the moment because uh, Gecko Mori has had his time. I did well with him and I kind of just wanted to, you know, try something a little new and interesting over at Locals. And I believe that um my opponent chose to go first i do end up using the event card here to try and find stage and would you believe it we actually find stage this match feels good man <laughs> so i'll go ahead and rest the other dawn and get the stage down uh, this allows me to kind of set up my trash a little bit and uh, see if i can find some useful items I do end up picking up a Reiju, uh, excuse me, the little Reiju off of, you know, trashing the 7 cost, and I'll just pass it over to my opponent. As you can see, the easiest <laughs> 8k swing. I'm considering whether I want to counter out of this or not, because I know that my opponent more than likely could hit me with just a 10k next turn, and getting out of that could be pretty annoying, but uh, it does kind of depend. So I do actually choose to drop three cards from hand here just to defend life i know that if i am probably going to be expecting a 10k swing next turn i'd rather take that than the 8k so i'll go ahead and use reiju right here to get back the reiju i just trashed and now with only two cards in hand i get to draw back up to five so love to see it unfortunately you don't love to see that i drew into two of the uh germa 66 events here it doesn't exactly help me. I need to see some counter power, but also, you know, some of my other pieces here. <clears throat> I do find myself in a little bit of a weird spot because I was hoping to kind of naturally draw into Queen with Reiju. Because um, Queen is just so nice in being able to like kind of deal with my opponent's really large attacks in this matchup. But it, it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. And uh, I do end up picking up that seven cost though, and cycling out my, uh, cycling out the exact card. I'm probably looking for Reju here. Yeah, just looking for Reju. I want to have as much card draw power as possible. Um, and I'll go ahead and use that second event as well. Probably should have swung leader by now, but it's really not that important. I end up finding that Sora. Love the 2K counters. I know that I'm not going to get out of that 10K next turn though, but at least it's something for you know future turns. Uh, he'll just counter out real fast with Bej, and uh, yeah, yeah, quick 10k, we, we saw it coming. <laughs> and we get really, really lucky, like disgustingly lucky here. My first two life happen to be two queens. So that is about as good as it gets in, into this matchup. Uh, just picking up two queens off of that is like, oh, perfect, now I can kind of cycle my hand a little bit, as well as have a blocker for, uh, you know, any of those larger swings that'll be coming through. So I get to draw two, trash one, and then draw another one for the leader effect. The hand size is looking super comfortable right now. I will just go ahead and get rid of the seven cost, and uh, now we can use stage two as well. We can just kind of pitch one of the, maybe like the four cost Reiju here, um, just get that into trash. It, oh, but we just choose the five cost Niji. That's fine. And I'm probably looking for like 2k counters as well as Reiju. Like that's that's really all I'm thinking about. Staying healthy on hand size. Um, you know, making sure that I have enough counter for any of the larger swings that are coming down. 
And I'm pretty certain that my opponent kind of blows my mind right here and hits me with a card I was not expecting. Uh, he ends up with, I believe, being at 7 Dawn. Plays one of those spicy cards that uh, he's been trying out in the list. And <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it, it kind of caught me off guard a little bit. And as you can see, he's kind of fumbling between using the uh, the seven cost Hody Jones as well as uh, he's just put it to the front of his hand right now. But the seven cost Lin Lin, and that has been very interesting. I was not expecting my opponent to be running something of the sorts. It just feels like kind of a dead card in hand, but there are ways to be able to cycle it out as well as you know just getting down to one life and picking up a 7k attacker for the following turn is pretty insane but not going to use the Linlin this turn just going to use the uh hiori uh placing a card into life um does bump the hiori back down to the bottom so nice up to four life not too bad at all uh i'm more than likely trying to swing with reiju here to see if he'll rest the momo if we get a free rest out of that, it makes my uh, four cost ETG just feel that much better. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and swing five, see what happens. And if we do get lucky. We get the Momo nice and rested. And now ETG just really goes hard and making, making sure like one, we get pressure to my opponent, but also simultaneously just taking care of, you know, potentially a threat on the board like... I don't really want to see. I don't really want to see another massive double attack come into life, uh, getting me down to zero, because that puts me within range for Hody Jones, Jones, which is eh, just not. It doesn't feel great. <laughs> but uh, thankfully, we picked up those two queens because that card is extremely useful in this situation. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get that Raju though. Love to see it. <clears throat> We've got plenty of ways to counter out and then get our hand back pretty much immediately oh this is interesting i'm gonna go 6k here we do get a counter with the hiori the two cost hiori which is really interesting yet again another card that i wasn't exactly expecting from my opponent but i was just trying to get as many cards out of my opponent's hand as possible that turn i decided not to go for the rush ichiji but instead just play the queen um and cycle out some of the hand and i do just go ahead and pass uh, i actually don't use the queen effect here i actually decide not to because i'm about to be at eight dawn so maybe i think the reason why i was going for this play was i really wanted to uh potentially have a judge play or maybe just threaten judge you know it's enough to kind of i don't even think we have it in hand but yeah i think i'm just trying to threaten it as much as possible so that my uh my opponent's like mm, i don't know and I believe we're going 7k here into... I'm not sure if this is into Raju or not, but I'm going to uh, alleviate some of the hand size a little bit. I wanted to get within range of being able to use Raju again. And then he plays the 7 cost Olin. This... Uh, I love the card, but it caught me off guard. I was not expecting that. <laughs> so 7k, uh, pretty annoying card. Obviously, like... My four cost rush kind of gets me there if needed, but with that, as well as Hody Jones and him being healthy on life, there is, you know, potential for quite a bit of pressure. I also don't know what is in my opponent's life, so he could have quite a bit of, uh, <clears throat> he could have a, quite a bit of triggers here. Um, and I do choose to just take the Sora. I was trashing Niji so that I had it for the eight cost effect, but I don't believe that I have judge in hand right now maybe i do no i don't <laughs> i totally do not uh, i think i'm just getting within range that judge will be really nice but uh just using ichiji it doesn't really matter bringing down olin here uh draw into a nice reju so that's always going to be good for us uh to yet again keep the hand size nice and healthy i've got a lot of dawn to work with a lot of pressure that i can put down this turn so I know that I could probably get him to either two or one life here, but I'm just going to swing six with Reiju. Uh, he does take this, gets a Kiku. Kiku is pretty solid for my opponent, um, but I'm not, I'm not threatening it or yeah, I'm not sweating it too much. Uh, I could just poke five, see what happens. 
Um, I don't believe he has any counter though, so he just decides to take the life, and it ends up being a Capone Beige. Uh, that's not going to do him too much here, but the zero cost event is going to get out of that 7k swing. Um, <clears throat> I really want to get him within one life range, but I know that I'm not threatened by Amaru here just because we do have the five cost queen. But I have like this three dawn that's not really doing too much for me here. I was a little upset that I should have attacked first because I could have saved Niji in hand and then bounced back one of these Kikus. But yeah, two Kikus off the top of the life. Pretty solid for my opponent, all things considered. Uh, he's got 10 dawn to work with. I only have one blocker. So there's quite a bit of threats here but we have a really sizable hand we've got a lot of counter power to get out of this um obviously like hody jones kind of helps him get there potentially and that's what he is going to use so we're going to see hody jones resting my queen um yeah this is going to force the the hiori back to hand and now he's going to use that amaru onto i believe yeah amaru onto leader we're going to see a 9k swing into life I know that if I take this, I'm more than likely lose from how many how many like other swings he'll have, like the 8k, um, yeah, 8k, 6, 6, 7, and then still having to use leader effect, but I do counter out of it with three cards. He swings six. I have enough counter to get out of this six, but I actually forget about my opponent being able to use leader effect. Um, so not countering one of those, I believe ends up putting putting me in a really bad spot. Because now he just has an 8k and then I start to realize, wait, why would he go 8 first? Oh, it's because leader effect makes Olin 9. So I'm actually kind of sweating bullets right now. And I get really, really lucky that I draw into a 2k Kaya off of the top of life. Because that was all the counter I needed. I was able to get to 10k right there. But I definitely misplayed that at the end. I had enough to get out of one of the Kiku 6k swings. Uh, but I wasn't really kind of thinking of the Yamato effect. So <laughs> super lucky for me right there at the very end. I feel like I got away with a steal. Um, but yeah, definitely got to be careful about making those misplays. Just forgetting about Yamato's leader effect uh, can cost you in the end of those matches. But solid match overall. I think that the Olin was really interesting. The double Kiku out of life into a Hody Jones at the end was like insane pressure. But lucky for us, Queen was just able to kind of get us there as well as using Reiju to, you know, keep buffing up the hand. So pretty solid. Hope you guys enjoyed the match and I'll catch y'all in the next one. All right. Peace.